I do think that uh, public spaces and the city is a place where people from all kinds of different background, backgrounds interact, where the city is a place where you meet strangers, where you have uh, the um, possibility to interact with people who are not close to you, who are not similar to you, who you don't sh necessarily have to share a lot with, but you still, uh, you share the same space and you interact, you become aware of each other uh, without um, having to form like a close-knit community. And I think that in order to promote solidarity in a society, you need to have the infrastructure for those relationships and those kind of being aware of differences, being aware of other people, um, even having conflicts about this shared public space. Uh, this is a, I think it's a precondition for us to realize how much we are associated and to democratically shape this situation. So public spaces, I think, are about democracy. I mean, it's not, um, not a coincidence that, of course, uh, I mean, protests, demonstrations, and so on, they need public spaces. If you, don't have, if you don't have them, if you don't have the places where you can assemble, meet, uh, then the kind of uh, civil society, the kind of protest, the kind of uh, articulating uh, uh, one's um, political demands will not be possible. I think there is a second point. It is also uh, important to have public spaces on the level of everyday practices and our like everyday form of life. It's not just about the sphere of politics, it's also about uh, how we um, become social beings, how we um, learn to act in relation to each other. And there are, for example, Hannah Arendt who defends that it's only through acting in public that we come to define ourselves in some way, that we come to articulate who we are and I think there is something to it. Um, so public spaces uh, make it possible for us to interact with strangers and to figure out who we are. Public spaces make it possible to um, form some kind of, uh, I mean, a, a precondition for collective action, for collective democratic action. I mean, one could go... Uh, into the history of cities. In, in Germany, there's this uh, proverbial Stadtluft macht frei, uh, meaning uh, the air of, of cities sets you free. And this had a very concrete uh, meaning because there was, um, um, in medieval times and under enforced labor, there was the rule that uh, once you made it to the city and once you stayed there for one year and one day, uh, you were uh, liberated, you were set free from um, enforced labor. Um, so there is a strong, uh, I mean, this is of course a very uh, 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 practical, political, uh, legal uh, sense in which um, cities are linked to freedom, but I think there is still something to it, I mean, in, in a more metaphorical way. And this has something to do with um, the anonymity of, of cities. Uh, and uh, what I refer to as the, like, the kind of interaction among strangers that also, and the fact that they stay, I mean, that they are and remain strangers, that it's not formed into uh, 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 the kind of close-knit community, of course has a liberating effect, the effect that one can, to a certain extent, um, invent who one is, can follow one's own rules, can act out differences, and it is a place where um, the tolerance for those differences uh, is learned and um, articulated. But there has been a hostility towards um, bigger cities, uh, the, it's a long-standing conservative tradition to uh, be critical about and to 
um, to accuse big cities of all kinds of like moral decline. Uh, and this is telling as well. I mean, it's just, I mean, the fact that minorities, people with uh, con di different alternative forms of life, the kind of, um, I mean, even when, when it comes to social movement, protest forms, the kind of free spaces that, uh, which uh, in, the, in the last decades have become more and more important and more and more, and more restricted. I mean, the fight for uh, the right to the city is also a right to uh, creating those spaces, uh, the right to creating spaces where one could try out different uh, uh, forms of life. And I think all this mess, <laughs> so to say, is what uh, um, like the right wing can become very nervous about. And as I said, it's a long-standing uh, tradition. I'm not the type who loves to be at home and to uh, be in this kind of um, safe space at home. I have a lot of public spaces that are very important for me. Let me think. I mean, it starts with um, the neighborhood I live in. We, in, in, in the neighborhood I live in, it's still possible to have dinner parties at the sidewalk. I mean, we have, we live, uh, uh, in a street where we have a broad sidewalk and we used to have like wooden benches in order to celebrate, to have birthday parties, to have dinner parties. Uh, we even had like academic receptions <laughs> in this place. And we are very lucky that this is still possible and I know that this kind of thing is in danger because this is a kind of use of a public space that is not defined, that is not, I mean, we didn't pay for it. We don't pay for it, we just do it. Um, um, the park that I mentioned where a lot of people uh, from very different backgrounds, I mean, our kids play soccer in the park, uh, there are playgrounds, there are also people, um, as I said, I mean, uh, living their social and economic life in the park. Um, we do barbecues uh, there, a lot of, I mean, the Turkish migrant community um, was the first one to use those public places in this park in order to have like barbecue parties. So this is also something that where, I mean, we somehow took our clue from them how to use uh, public space. So this is a very important um, uh, part of my daily life. Um, then there is a public swimming pool, and that is again a place where everyone, I mean, where you find people of all, I mean, all kinds of people. Uh, uh, it cuts through the generations, it's, it cuts through like the social, because it's, it's public, it's uh, not so expensive. Um, there are people uh, living in projects who spent the whole summer there. I mean, at the beginning of the summer, they would <laughs> come with uh, little chairs and like boxes with uh, beer and whatever. Uh, and at the same time, there are like, uh, I mean, business people, academics and so on, who do their daily routine, for their, uh, whose daily routine it is to, uh, to, to go swimming. So this is a public space that uh, it was only when I lived in the United States that I realized how important and how rare this is, and that it doesn't go without saying. I mean, when you live in a, or when you look at, I don't know, a city like Sao Paulo or uh, uh, the like, or, or Mexico City. I mean, it's not that public uh, spaces and public pools of this kind would be available everywhere. It is something that is strongly privatized, very expensive sometimes. It's, I mean, it is a luxury that we have in, um, <clears throat> in the still somehow well-functioning uh, uh, welfare state infrastructure. So this is a place that I um, rely on a lot. And then the last one is a public library, which um, is just, since I don't like working at home, I, uh, so I spend my, uh, I mean, whenever I can do research, uh, uh, when I'm writing, I always go to the library. Uh, I spent my whole life there, <laughs> more or less. I started to go to public libraries when I was, I mean, still, um, uh, in high school and, and uh, or, or uh, at, at college, and I continue to do this. I mean, 
Uh, I do have an office, of course, at the university, but, but I would always prefer working in, in a public library to, uh, to doing this, and I do this all over the world. Whenever I spend time in other cities, I would always look for the most interesting library. And again, it doesn't go without saying, for example, in the United States, most of the good libraries are private, I mean, are like, or um, related to uh, 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 colleges or the universities, so there is no unrestricted public access. Uh, of course, you have the York Public Library also, which is a beautiful one. But again, it's something that I have learned to... Um, to see as some kind of a luxury that we have those uh, spaces who are, and I mean, I'm particularly talking about the, it's called Staatsbibliothek in, in Berlin. It's also beautiful talking about how architecture shapes our practices and our way of life. It's a beautiful architecture done by Sharon, um, a, f a famous architect. And you see how the way that the room is, I mean, it, it's like, it, it feels like being in some kind of a ship or something. So it's, it's a very interesting, I mean, this uh, museum has an interesting architecture as well, but it's very special and something that uh, allows you to be completely focused on yourself and your own work, but at the same time being with others. So this kind of being with others, being with strangers uh, that you somehow relate to, but at the same time uh, don't have to, uh, is a very unique experience. And for me, it's the most uh, inspiring atmosphere for working and thinking. <laughs>